Today we've got one of the craziest functional equation problems that I've ever seen. And while this problem and an outline for its solution can be found in the math magazine. So our goal is to find all functions f from natural numbers to natural numbers satisfying the following functional equation. So we have f of f of f of n plus 6 f of n equals 3 f of f of n plus 4n plus 2001. So over here we've got a triple, triple composition, here's a double composition, here's just you know the function by itself, and this is n, which is like a zeroth composition. So I think first what we'll do is introduce some notation that simplifies this a little bit, and that's the following. So let's set f sub k of n equal to the k-fold composition of f evaluated at n. So here we've got k times. And now let's observe the, th the following pretty obvious thing, and that is f sub a composed with f sub b of n is f of a plus b, or f sub a plus b of n. That's pretty clear, I think. So now we can rewrite this functional equation using this setup. And let's observe that what it is, is we have f sub 3 of n, and then plus 6 f sub 1 of n equals 3 f sub 2 of n, and then plus 4 f sub 0 of n, and then plus 2001. But before we like move over to the main section of the board, let's observe that this immediately gives us the following kind of bigger recursion, and that's if we replace n with f sub m of n. So it's gonna give us the following. So we'll have f sub m plus three of n, and then minus 3 times f sub m plus 2 of n. Here I'm moving everything to one side of the equation, or almost everything. And then let's see, plus 6 f sub m plus 1 of n, and then plus 4 f sub m of n is equal to 2001. And I just noticed that that should have been a minus sign. So again, <laughs> this is maybe what we can think of as a better, more general version of our given functional equation. And now here's where things get crazy. We're going to proceed the next several steps using a functional equation. And now here's where things get crazy and where this uses a technique that I've never seen for a functional equation type problem. And that is for the next couple of steps, we're gonna use generating functions. So let's set f sub n, capital F sub n of x equal to the sum as m goes from 0 up to infinity of f sub m of n times x to the m power. So you can think of this as like either a function of two variables over here, x and n, or you can maybe fix n as like a parameter and think of this as like a collection of uh, generating functions for this sequence f sub m of n. But now what we'll do is observe that this fact that we've got a f sub m plus 3, a minus 3 f sub m plus 2, a plus 6 f sub m plus 1, and a minus 4 f sub m motivates us to look at the following object. And that is 1 minus 3x and then plus 6x squared, and then minus 4x cubed times f sub n of x. And again, we can kind of think about this because multiplying x into f sub n of x will uh, kind of take care of this type of term after maybe some sort of re-indexing. And then the 6x squared will re-index into this f sub m plus 1 type term. And then the 4x cubed will re-index into this 4f sub m of n type term. Now let's split this into pieces. So this is going to give us the sum 
m goes from 0 up to infinity of f sub m of x, sorry, of n times x to the m. And then we'll have minus 3, and then the sum as m goes from 0 to infinity, f sub m of x times x to the m plus 1. And then a plus, let's see, a 6. And then, well, essentially the same kind of thing, except we've got x to the m plus 2. So that should be an n again. And then a minus 4. And then here we have the sum as m goes from 0 to infinity, f sub m of n, x to the m plus 3. Okay. So that's what we get after like moving everything through. But now what we'll do is take out the first couple of terms from these first couple of terms. And that's motivated by the fact that notice that this starts at constant terms. So this looks like f sub 0 of n plus more. Whereas this one right here starts at x to the first power terms. It looks like f sub 0 of n times x plus more. This one right here starts at x squared terms. So it looks like f sub 0 of n times x squared plus more. And then this one right here starts at f or x cubed terms. So f sub 0 of n times x cubed plus more. So what we'd like to do is take out all of the powers of x that are less than or equal to 3. So that's going to look something like this. So notice the only constant term comes from this first bit. So that would be f sub 0 of n. Now what about the x terms? So notice we get an x term from this first sum and. That's going to be f sub 1 of n. And then minus 3 f sub 0 of n from this second big sum. And then the x squared terms will come from the first three. So that'll look something like this. We'll have f sub 2 of n and then minus 3f sub 1 of n and then let's see plus 6f sub 0 of n times x squared. Okay, cool. But then after that, everything that's left over starts with an x cubed. So we can take everything left over starting with an x cubed and smush it into this sum that looks like x to the m plus 3. So that's going to be something that looks like this. So now we're going to have the sum as m goes from 0 up to infinity of f sub, let's see, m plus 3 of n. So that's like attached to this first bit. And then minus 3 times f sub m plus 2 of n. And then plus 6 f sub m plus 1 of n. And then finally minus 4 f sub m of n. And this is all multiplied into x cubed. Sorry, not x cubed. x to the m plus 3. Okay, cool. So again, that's just from taking out these first terms. And after we take out these first terms, we push everything together and re-index as necessary. Okay, but now let's observe that what we have inside of this sum is exactly this blue boxed thing over here. So that means that that adds up to 2001. And then furthermore, we don't really need to know exactly what these numbers, which are the constant term, the coefficient of x, and the coefficient of x squared at the moment, so we might as well group those together. And that allows us to write this whole thing as, maybe we'll write it as a plus bx plus cx squared, where just to be really thorough here, this is the number a, this right here is the number b, and then this right here is the number c. And then after that, we can apply the rule for the summation of a geometric series to sum the rest of that. And that's going to give us 2001 times x cubed over 1 minus x. So the starting term is x squared, or x cubed, I should say, times 2001, and then the common ratio is x. That's why we get that. Okay, so I guess where are we going to start? 
start from here? Well, I think maybe starting from this extreme left hand and right hand side of the equation is uh, what we'll do to go to the next step. Okay, so now we're ready to move on, but I'm gonna do something that I always forget to do, and that is plug my Patreon and channel memberships. So at least a couple of times a month, I post videos quite a bit early on Patreon and on channel memberships. And also the income from that allows me to keep my second channel, which is a purely mathematics learning channel, ad free. So if you wanna check out that other channel, it's Math Major, it's linked in the description. And if you wanna join or join the Patreon, that would be uh, much appreciated. Thanks to all of you who already do that. Okay, so here's where we ended up. We've got this polynomial right here times f sub n of x is equal to, well, it's a quadratic polynomial plus 2001 times x cubed over one minus x. And now what we'll do is observe that there's actually a nice factorization of this cubic polynomial. And well, this factorization pretty much describes why these numbers have been chosen in our original, um, let's see, functional equation. And so this in fact factors as one minus x times uh, one minus two x plus four x squared. Now this one minus two x minus four x squared may seem a little bit hard to work with, but in fact, this looks like one plus eight x cubed over one plus two x. So it's in fact like a kind of a factorization of, or it's related to a factorization of a sum of cubes. Okay, so that means we can solve for f sub n of x and we'll get something like this. So we have this one plus two x times our quadratic polynomial a plus bx plus cx squared. And then that's all gonna be over one minus x times one plus eight x cubed. And then we've got this next bit right here, which will be 2001 x cubed over, let's see, it'll be one minus x squared times one plus eight x cubed. And then all of that is still multiplied into one plus two x. Okay, so that's what we have for f sub n of x. But now, Let's observe that that's simply a rational function. And furthermore, the degree of the numerator is always less than the degree of the denominator in all of these cases. So that, in fact, tells us that we should be able to do some sort of partial fraction decomposition of this object. And the partial fraction decomposition will go like a over 1 minus x plus b over 1 minus x quantity squared plus cx plus d over, let's see, one plus eight x cubed. So again, that's simply the partial fraction decomposition of what we had up there. But now let's observe that we can re-expand these as geometric series. That's gonna give us a times the sum as, let's say, m goes from zero to infinity of x to the m. And then here we have b, and then the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of m plus one times x to the m. That's the derivative of the previous term, um, or you can also think about that as maybe a binomial expansion where you have one minus x to the minus two. Either way you get at it, that's the power series that we need here. And then this last one will be plus cx plus d, times this sum as m goes from zero to infinity of, let's see, we'll have minus two times x quantity cubed. That's in fact the common ratio there. But now let's observe up here that all of our coefficients are positive integers. So these are all natural numbers and that's because that's the domain and codomain of our function. But that means that all of these numbers down here also have to be natural numbers. But let's observe that this could inject some negativeness into the situation. So what that tells me is that the C and the D both must be zero. And that's just to make sure that we don't get any negativeness into the coefficients here. Otherwise we would. 
So let's see, that means, like I said, that this is going to just turn into zero because, well, let's see, we need only positive coefficients. And as you'll notice, this uh, power of x here, well, that should be three times n, that's my mistake, gets larger and larger and larger, so the negativeness would eventually overtake the a and b. Okay, so anyway, that's equal to zero, which means we have f sub n of x expands simply like this. But we can in fact put this together, and what do we see? So that's gonna be the sum as m goes from zero to infinity, and then we'll have a plus m plus one times b times x to the m. Now what we need to do is well, we need to figure out what A and B are, and that's essentially gonna take us almost all the way to the end. Okay, so here's where we left off. We saw that our generating function really expanded like A plus M plus one times B. Those were the coefficients of X to the M. But that gives us a system of equations. So we get an equation for the M equals zero case. We get an equation for the M equals one case, an equation for the M equals two case, an equation for the m equals three case, and so on and so forth. So let's look at these. So for the m equals zero case, we get f sub zero of n, which is simply n, equals a plus b, because it's zero plus one times b. For the m equals one case, we get f of n, because that's f sub one of n, equals a plus two b. And then for the m equals two case, we're gonna get f sub two of n equals a plus three b. And then here we'll have f sub three of n is equal to a plus four b. So we get something like that. But let's observe that we can take these first two equations and use them to solve for a and b in terms of n and f of n. So simply by subtracting these two, we will immediately see that b is equal to f of n minus n. And then from that, we can pretty easily get that a is equal to 2n minus f of n. So something like that. But then we can do something similar over here, or I shouldn't say that, we can take our results from this and plug them into these two, and we'll see that that means that f sub two of n is equal to two f of n minus n. And then f sub three of n is equal to three f of n minus two n. But this is actually really good news, because now what we can do is take these expressions for f sub two and f sub three of n and plug them into our, let's see, original functional equation or this version of our functional equation or really this version of our functional equation where m is equal to zero. So let's see what that does to us. So what do we have? So we have f sub three of n, but f sub three of n is three times f of n minus two n, so like I said, that's our f sub three of n, minus two, or sorry, minus three f sub two of n, but we know that f sub two of n is two times f of n minus n, and then we have plus six f sub one of n, but that's just f of n, and then let's see, minus four n equals 2001. So that's what we get after all is said and done with that calculation. But notice that gives us a very, very clear path to solve for f of n in terms of n. And well, what do we get? Let's see, we have three f of n here. We've got a minus six f of n here and a plus six f of n here. So this turns into three f of n. And then let's see, we have minus two n. And then after that, we have plus three n. So that's gonna end up with a positive n. And then minus four n, so that'll be minus three n equals 2001. But from there, it's very, very easy to see that we have f of n equals n plus 2001 divided by three, which is six, six, seven. And there we have it. That's what our function must be. And then I guess you can check that it satisfies our original functional equation, and then we're totally done. 
and that's a good place to stop.